So this just showed up via FedEx, and I got to say, uh, I never thought this uh, this would ever happen, but uh, it is here. So uh, so let's talk about the HL15 that 45 Drives sent me. So if you follow me on Facebook or Mastodon or Twitter, or if you've seen some of my recent videos, you'll know that I recently received an HL15 from 45 Drives. At this point, I've had the device for just over a week, and I've been really enjoying learning some new stuff with it already. I've been learning how to handle hardware pass-throughs on Proxmox VMs, and I've started learning how to set up and configure Home Assistant, also in Proxmox, but in a container. And of course, videos about both of these topics and a bunch more are definitely coming, so don't forget to get subscribed. But before we get into those videos, I did want to make this video video to talk about the hardware that I've got in the new system and what my end goal is with the HL15. Now I've currently got three mini PCs and I think three NAS devices running on my home network to facilitate my self-hosting and storage needs. And while that's been fine, I would definitely like to consolidate some of that, not only to reduce power consumption, but also to simplify some of my administration. Now, Technotem actually made a video about this recently, and it definitely helped me solidify the thought that I definitely want to move everything into a single unit instead of having it spread all over the place like I have now. And with that said, let's talk about what my HL15 configuration from 45 drives looks like. Basically what they did was they went to the HL15 configurator on their website and just maxed out everything. Now they started with the HL15 fully built and burned in option. Um, and as far as the motherboards are concerned, there are two different variants to that. One has uh, an RJ45 10 gig connection and the other has the SFP plus 10 gig connection. And that's the one I went with um, because I've already got an RJ45 10 gig card. Uh, so I just threw that in there. Um, and that way I've got a couple of different options as far as connectivity is concerned. Somehow I ended up getting the max upgrade on the processor and got the Xeon Gold 6230R with 26 cores and 52 threads with a base clock of 2.1 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4 gigahertz with a 150 watt TDP. They also hooked me up with four sticks of 64 gig DDR4 ECC memory for a total of 256 gigs of RAM. Now there were also a couple of extras that they threw in, like a custom faceplate, which I dig, that's got my face on it. And I have to assume that they deliberately put my face where the screws were going to be so that it looks like I'm wearing earrings. I don't know why, I think it's funny though. They also threw in some mounting rails to help me uh, mount the HL15 in my rack, but that's where I ran into some issues. As it turns out, the HL15 is the exact width of my SysRacks 27U server rack, and the rails that were sent to me made the HL15 just too wide to fit in there. So I went and purchased a smaller rail set, and even that made the system too wide. So. As a result, at least for now, uh, I've got the HL15 behind me mounted, hard mounted in the server rack, uh, which is going to make some of the maintenance I need to do a bit more difficult, but I will definitely make it work. So uh, as it turns out, now I've got a server in my rack behind me that's actually worth more than my car. And I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm super thankful that I do. So there were a few things that I noticed once I got the system uh, plugged in and, and turned on and that sort of thing. First is it's got IPMI, which I dig. I, I love being able to remotely uh, turn the system on and off as necessary or, or kind of see what's going on on the boot screen without having to have uh, a monitor plugged in. I really appreciate IPMI. I've never used it prior to this and I'm really, really glad that it's there. It's actually saved me a lot more time than I thought it would. Also, so um, it came, the, the HL15 came with Rocky Linux pre-installed as a desktop operating system, um, which I've got no experience with, um, but it's, it's fine. Um, however, it didn't last long on the system, but we'll come back to that. Um, the third thing that I noticed is that it's got a uh, Houston C Control Center uh, pre-installed on it. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a bit. Um, but once I kind of figured all of that stuff out, what I wanted to do next was actually find out uh, what would happen if I ran a stress test on it to get an idea of what my CPU temperatures and fan noise might be. So I installed and ran a command line stress test and then monitored the temperatures in the Houston Control Center uh, that again was also pre-installed installed and the CPU temperatures got as high as 97 C, which is a bit worrying, but the likelihood of the CPU being pushed that hard under normal, normal use, and at least in my home lab, is actually pretty low. I also noticed that the fan speeds never seem to change and they never got any louder. So I'm guessing that by default, they're just running at 100% all of the time. And while that's probably the safest route, uh, the fans are kind of loud while running at 100%. 
So I'm definitely going to want to change out the cooling system as soon as possible. Uh, luckily, I've already contacted Noctua and they've sent me a little gift bag. So uh, there will be a video of me updating all of the cooling in the HL15 coming soon. So as I mentioned, Houston Control Center uh, did come pre-installed on this. And once I figured out how to get into it, uh, I actually found some cool stuff in there, like uh, the ability to kind of see your motherboard, but you can kind of hover over different areas uh, and see where the sensors are and what the temperatures of those sensors are, that kind of thing. And I really do appreciate that. I think that's a very cool little thing that they've added. Uh, I, I believe uh, Houston Control Center is built on cockpit and they've just modded the crap out of it and made it their own. And I really dig what they've done with it as far as that's concerned. Um, I also like that you can manage your hard drives. You can set up storage pools and monitor them from the dashboard as well. Um, and I really like how they show the grouping of the drives and all of the information about them in a super easy to understand kind of way. Again, right there in the dashboard in your browser. But as interesting as all of that happened to be with the Houston Control Center, of course, I had to get Proxmox installed on the HL15 so I could play around with it and get some ideas of how I'm going to move forward, because obviously uh, getting this as my primary server is the end goal. But before I got Proxmox installed on the new hardware, there were a few things that I needed to do first. Now, because 45 drives hooked me up and maxed out all of the hardware that they did, the only storage that came with my HL15 was the single one terabyte NVMe drive for the operating system. So that came out and I dropped a new two, two terabyte NVMe drive in there and uh, eventually got Proxmox installed on it, but I needed storage before I got that far. So I went through all of my old hardware that I hadn't used in a while and came up with hard drives for three storage pools. Uh, basically, I've got four eight terabyte drives, three six terabyte drives, and three four terabyte drives. And while I know it's not ideal, uh, it's what I had available to me, so that's what I went with. Now, with that said, if there are any storage providers out there who would like to help me set up a single large storage pool uh, to in the HL15, uh, my contact info is in the About section of my YouTube page, and I would love to hear from you. Now, because I wanted to set up a Plex server with GPU transcoding, and because I want to learn how to do uh, hardware pass-throughs and that sort of thing, I picked up an RTX 2070 on eBay for like 200 bucks and put that in the HL15 for that purpose. And I didn't realize everything that went into a GPU pass-through, um, but I have managed to find a couple of posts online that helped, as well as getting some help in my Discord server. Um, and there will definitely be a video on hardware pass-through at some point, so definitely get subscribed if you're interested in that. And as I mentioned earlier, I already had a 10 gig RJ45 network card laying around. So I threw that in there just for the fun of it. So once I had all of my hardware installed in the HL15, I got Proxmox installed on it, and I started trying out some new stuff that I hope to share with you here very soon. Currently, I've just got a VM for uh, my Plex server and a container for Home Assistant set up on it. But again, my long-term goal is to consolidate most of my other hardware into the HL15 and simplify my setup as much as possible. So if you'd like to follow Along. While I do that, please don't forget to like and subscribe to let me know that you're interested in this project. So here's the thing. Uh, none of this would be possible without you guys watching my videos. So I want to thank you for continuing to click on my videos and see what I'm up to on any given day. It really does get me excited to want to learn new things and try new things out and make more content to share with you guys to continue to build our little community here. I also want to again thank 45 Drives for giving me the opportunity to check out the HL15 especially in the configuration that they sent it to me in. Also, again, if there are any storage providers out there who would like to chat about a storage collaboration, I would be all about having that conversation. So feel free to email me with whatever you might have in mind there. But I think with all of that said, I do wanna go ahead and wrap up this video. And again, I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And I'll talk to you in the next video.